So we've given a we're given a function. It's piecewise, and the main body of the function is just this definition: cosine of x minus one over x squared. But we have to handle the special case when x equals zero because we have an x squared in the denominator. And then we're we're told that we'll also be using later on the function g of x, which is des defined as the integral from zero to x of our function plus 1. And the sorts of questions we're going to be asked are writing our new function f of x based on what we know about the Taylor series expansion about x equals 0 of cosine of x. And then a question about uh, whether we've got a relative min or max. Um, a further expansion of the function g, and finally some sort of estimate of the error bound given that we have an alternating series. So these are the pieces of information that I think are going to prove useful. Note in particular <coughs> that there's the expectation that we have memorized the Taylor series about x equals zero for cosine x along with sine x and e to the x and 1 over 1 minus x. So let's give it a shot. Part A just wants the first three non-zero terms and the general term for cosine. Okay, this as I mentioned is something we should simply have memorized. So we just write that cosine x we know is 1 minus x squared over 2 factorial plus x4 over 4 factorial. Those are the first three terms. Uh, first three terms, that's when one thing that they asked for. But they wanted us to go on and write out the general term so we can oblige them there as well namely negative 1 to the end, because we remember that it's an alternating series. x to the 2n, we remember that cosine is an even function. And then 2n factorial, because whatever appeared here has to also appear here in this Taylor series expansion. Okay, we've met their requirements for the non-zero terms and the general term. Now what they want are an application of this to the particular function we've been given. Namely, we're going to insert right in this location, we're going to insert right here the definition of the cosine series. We're going to insert the, I'm sorry, not the definition, but rather the expression of the infinite series, the Maclaurin series for cosine and then take one away from it, and then divide the whole thing term by term by x squared. So let's see what happens when we do that. Namely, what we want is f of x is going to be 1 over x squared times this series, 1 minus x squared over 2 factorial plus x4 over 4 factorial and so on, up through negative 1 to the n, x to the 2n, 2n factorial. And that goes on forever. And then when we get to the end of it, we want to subtract 1. So what does that do? Well, that 1 at the end cancels out our 1 at the beginning. And then the x squared applies term by term to what's left. So what we have is f of x equals, that's going to be a negative 1 over 2 factorial, and then plus x squared over 4 factorial, and so on, until we get to this term, which will be negative 1 to the n, x to the 2n, uh, that should have been a factorial there, 
all over 2 in factorial and then we're just going to divide by x squared so they asked for the first three terms I guess I should have been a little more careful here we're going to need one more term that's obviously going to be x 6 over 6 factorial and so f of x is just going to be x4 over 6 factorial and I'll say plus dot 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 <coughs> okay so those are the terms that we have now the only thing that's going to happen in terms of our a general term, we can write our general term like this. I notice that in the scoring guidelines they write it in an equivalent form, namely x to the uh, 2n over 2n plus 2 factorial. They're simply moving the term over by 1. Okay, doesn't really have any effect on the um, outcome. This is just as valid a description. Okay, so now they want to know, in part B, whether we have a, a relative max, min, or neither. So what we're going to do is we, we need to evaluate the first derivative and see if it's changing sign from uh, one value to another. And then we're going to use the second derivative test to see which way it's changing sign. So because the derivative exists at all the points here in question, uh, uh, namely at uh, x equals 0, um, we're just going to use the first derivative test to see that we get a 0 for the first derivative. That's a condition, a necessary but not a sufficient condition. Okay, well how do we figure out from looking at this what the first derivative is? Well, in any Maclaurin series expansion, the first derivative divided by 1 factorial has to be the coefficient in front of x to the 1 power. So, because the first derivative of f is the coefficient now technically speaking divided by one factorial but one factorial is just one so no one's really any, uh, concerned about that it's the coefficient of the x to the one power term there is no such term meaning the coefficient is 1, or meaning the coefficient is 0. Is 0. So there is no such term. That's what tells us that the coefficient is 0. And so that uh, checks out. Now, checking the second derivative to see whether it's a min, max, <coughs> or neither, okay, to check the second derivative, just recall that uh, the second derivative of x at 0 is the coefficient of the x squared term divided by 2 factorial. And that coefficient is clearly coefficient is 
um, uh, the thing that we see uh, here and the coefficient is uh, for for f of x the coefficient is positive okay. and so the second derivative is positive greater than zero and therefore we have a relative min okay part C they want the fifth degree Taylor polynomial for G about X equals zero <clears throat> well we know that G of X is 1 plus the integral from 0 to x f of t dt. We can just substitute in what f of t dt is. g of x equals 1 plus integral from 0 to x. What, what were those values of f of t? Uh, they were simply negative a half plus t squared over 4 factorial minus t4 over 6 factorial plus on and on. Now all we're going to do is integrate term by term. g of x equals 1 plus, what's the integral of this? Negative 1 half x. What's the next term? That's going to be t cubed, I'm sorry, x cubed. Here I should fix that. Okay. Plus x cubed over 3 times 4 factorial minus x5 over 5 times 6 factorial and it continues on. Okay. Now, they only wanted the, what did they ask for in Part C? The fifth degree. So we've written this is the fifth degree. Okay, so we're going to say that the first four terms are the fifth degree Taylor polynomial for x about 0. About x equals 0. Okay? Those are the first four terms. And they tell us that it's an alternating series with individual terms that decrease in absolute value to 0. So, that tells us something about the error bound, which will prove useful shortly. So first we'll write the third degree Taylor polynomial. And we're evaluating it for g of 1. Okay, so g of 1 is approximately equal to the third degree Taylor polynomial at 1, which is equal to 1 minus 1 half times 1 plus 1 cubed over 3 times 4 factorial. That's 1 cubed. And what is that? Well, if it were me, I would just leave it in this form, but just uh, for clarity's sake, let's figure out what that is. P3 of 1, 1 minus a half, so we're down to a half. And then what do we have here? 3 times 4 factorial. Um, that's going to be 4 factorial is 70, uh, 24 times 3 is 72 so it's 36 70 seconds uh, plus 1 part in 72 or 37 over 72 finally 
we want to convince them that we understand that the difference between P31 and the actual value is less than a part in 6 factorial. So we'll just say that the actual value minus 37 over 72, the absolute value of the difference between those, is less than the next term. What was the next term at x equals 1? Uh, 1 to the fifth over 5 times 6 factorial. Uh, we know that it's less than or equal to. 1 over 5 times 6 factorial. And that, we know for a fact, is less than 1 over 6 factorial. So we'll just add a little bit of explanation. The error bound chosen because chosen as the next term after truncation because the series is alternating and convergent. That's it.